So guys, the UK Championships, 44 years it's been around. 1977 was the first time it was played. Steve, you were there, talk me through it. Yeah, uh, I just remember the smell of the, uh, the Preston bus centre walking up the <laughs> stairs. Well, you, you wouldn't in 77 because it wasn't played there. 77 was played in Blackpool Tower. Fatsy Fagan won it in 1977. I was there, I was 14 years of age and got an autograph. The only one I got was Fatsy Fagan. So it was in the Blackpool Tower in 77. Goodness. All right. Steve, there you go. you're minus one. 77, I got a rally grifter from a Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Grifter? Yeah. Was Terry, on, was Terry on some kind of percentage or something? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. And then seven, 78 was Doug Mountjoy. So we had that. It was one of the worst dress finals in the history of sport. They all had their massive ruches all over the shirts. How they ever got down and queued up. Don't talk about Doug Mountjoy. Oh. <laughs> 1988. I beat him. Yeah. 9-2 in the semi-final. Thought, just turn up the final. Yeah. And Three happened? centuries in a row. 7-0 down it was. You only had to stand up to win, apparently. Well, famous line. dangerous thing to say. And then 79, of course. John Virgo. Yeah. Steve, did you play that one? Yeah, I lost to John Virgo. I remember um, a moment where I'd missed a shot and I just sat down in one of the punter's chairs, which was just laid by the black spot area on the side of the table. And um, I put my cue down on the chairs. And, and as John was at the table, my cue just rolled back onto the metal parts of the backs of the oh chairs. Oh dear, John went like that. And the noise. And I, I've never wished that somebody beat me in that frame as much, because obviously when John didn't do so well in things like that, he, steam came out the top of his head. <laughs> but, Did he do that? Did he do that? <laughs> yeah. But he went, on to, he went on to produce some great stuff in the final against Terry Griffiths. What was the first year you won it? November 1980, I beat Alex Higgins the final, 18-6. No, I didn't. 16-6. 16-6. So that was the first session early. one of your many. Yeah, session early. And, um, it, How did he take it? He I beat him in the UK well. once. He didn't take it very well when I beat him. My best memory is I'm, I'm playing on the table. Yeah, it's like an eight-table setup, which was wonderful because you could walk around the back yeah, and yeah, as yeah. a punter watch all of the matches unfold. Mm, but values. we had a central aisle down the middle that, you could just, that we, all the players went to, to their places before they got introduced in. So Alex is playing Stephen. Um, on one table, and I'm delighted to not be playing Alex. Right? <laughs> I think I was 6-2 up. This yeah. was a night session. I was on the other table, opposite. So me and Stephen are standing there ready, and then and obviously Alex, I think, had been down the pub. <laughs> right? And he's 6-2 behind against Stephen, and we saw him walking up the, the, the gap. Like well, we felt him probably <laughs> before we saw him. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, he's he got to me. Presence, and the disturbance in the force. <laughs> and I'm not the enemy, right? Ooh. Stephen's the enemy. So now I'm his friend. So he looks at me, and he goes, I'm him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I went, and I went, oh, fair enough. I said, I'm just pleased, just pleased I'm not playing you. And then, of course, that was the even more infamous moments after, uh, after Alex had beaten you, what well, he said. I mean, yeah, you can't I'm, really I'm, repeat it. But well, you can't really repeat it. I mean, I, we, we shook hands and, and uh, he very politely said, <laughs> you. <laughs> And, uh, and, and to, you know, so I was obviously slightly taken aback <laughs> by that. You told Ian Doyle. Told everyone. And then they went in the press conference and um, the press said, well, you had a little conversation with Stephen after. What did you say? And he went, all I said was, well done. You're a little bit lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also played, I think it was in the final against, uh, against Alex, where John Williams was a referee. I potted the pink rolled it into the middle pocket for a red into a corner. And John Williams had an aberration. Instead of picking the pink out of the pocket and putting it back on the spot, he picked the white ball off the table. Oh. And I walked round and a look of shock on his face. And I just laughed. Oh, obviously, all John's got to do is plonk it down on the table yeah, roughly yeah, yeah. where it was. Alex jumped out of his seat and went, that's a foul. I want a foul. I want a foul for that. So John Williams and, and Alex then had a stand-up argument at the, at the Guild Hall while I said to John Williams, can I just go off to the toilet while you just sort of sort it out? Sort it out. That doesn't sound like Alex and John Williams at all. They never fell out. They never fell out at all. No. One thing about the UK Championship, uh, regardless of which venue it's been at, is that over the years uh, it's produced less shock winners than the world's. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know why. I always felt it was the players' players' tournament, like yeah. the, the players' championship in a way. Great venue though, the Guildhall, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. brilliant. I, fe I went there, as I say, I went there as a 14-year-old. It was a year after sort of thing, and I went there with, with my father. Walked in the place and thought, yeah, I want to play here. You, you wouldn't great. have had to stay there, would you? Because you, you stayed. No, there. I was only 40 minutes away, so I used to just commute all the time, go in, and that was, that, was great. My for question me. was going to be, 
through the car park or outside the car park through, to get to the venue from the hotel? Up the <laughs> stairs <laughs> and along, along level two, straight yeah. through the car park. There was some, there was, I have to be they honest. Stunk. There was they some stunk. Fun, there was some funky corridors before you got into that place. Is that like a, you know, one of these reviews, travel reviews? Is that what they said about <laughs> it, was it? Like, <laughs> It wasn't the best to get in, but the venue itself was brilliant. And the fact you could, that concourse, of the, you know, you could walk around the concourse, couldn't you see all eight tables, pick whichever one, and you could sit there and watch three or four at once. What year was your first one? 1989. So I lost to Doug yeah. in 88, yeah. and then 1989, um, I, I won my first one. Who against? Um, Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, yeah. That was a bit oh, awkward, wasn't it? Oh, that was a bit <laughs> awkward. Was yeah. no, what was the score? Um, was that the 16-15 one? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When you when you twitched so many times <laughs> to beat me to beat me 16-14, what were you 50 in front? I done actually one of the best clearances of my career. I mean, uh, what the one with the blue down the rest uh, uh, down the cushion with the rest? Yes, where the yeah, yeah, that's right. the blue up. That's right. That's the, the pockets one. Pockets were like a nine ball. Yeah. 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 Chances did you have on that frame? I mean, yeah, really? That's just. I think that was the beginning. That hurt. There, wasn't that it? hurt a lot. I mean, uh, especially. I mean, and then David Vine went. End of an era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was always a good judge. He was a fantastic judge. <laughs> Who would have thought it? And then, and from then on, as far as I was concerned, I don't think the UK then was played afterwards, was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It definitely was, because it was one of my first proper memories of snooker, having only taken the game up towards the very late uh, 80s and into the early 90s, was your win yeah. in 1991. That's one yeah. of my first childhood memories of the game other than chasing you up the street at the crucible for an autograph did he uh, stop and did he stop and sign it do you know he did oh he did he must have won <laughs> but he, you two were pretty decent you know in your day i used to think at one stage i remember and i'm probably sure stephen i used i used to feel much more at home and more comfortable at the at the, <clears throat> the guild hall than i did at the world championship the crucible and there was times when i felt like the, the, the guild hall was my office there was that moment where I just felt absolutely unbeatable. And it wasn't the best venue, because it was only, the final yeah. stage, it was only half of the room. So yeah, it wasn't yeah, the full part. Yeah. But there was something nice about that upstairs balcony, uh, the, the, the walk Do around you know what I didn't back. like about the guild, although? The dressing rooms, there wasn't enough toilets, because having to go in after you was not a very nice experience. <laughs> I remember that. You must have, you must have oh, witnessed that. It was a shocker. I was, well, I was always trying to get in front of him. You needed a canary in a cage to go in, honestly. It was like, I was very good at laying I'll a few traps. I was very good at I'll laying traps. You were obviously very nervous. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, you always knew he was keyed up. <laughs> Listen, the, the match starts before you, get, before you strike the first cue ball. <laughs> now, talking of early memories for me, one of my next earliest memories was the 1993. UK championship. Was this me, you losing to a 17-year-old? This was you losing to a 17-year-old who went on to become pretty good. How did you take that? Because I tell you what, when you came along, mm. I mean, as, you know, no, no we, I know this because mm. I've told you, I hated you, right? Okay, fair enough. Okay, because you took all my sweets away and took all my prize money and tournaments and everything, okay. So therefore, I didn't take it very well when you came along and the UK championship was the start of that. How do you th think, think you took Ronnie O'Sullivan when he started to overcome your standard? I uh, hated it. Well, I'm going to teach him a lesson. I'm going to say, all right, this is, this is where you belong. I'm the best player in the world. And he comes along and beats you. Yeah. It's not nice. Which venue, obviously we've got vested interests. I, you know, which venue do you think has been the best? Well, I've only played in a handful of them. I mean, I, the year I won it was in Telford. Uh, but I, my own personal favourite is here, right here in the Barbican. Didn't really play it in the Guildhall in Preston. You know, I played other events there, and in later years it was used as a qualifying venue for some of our other championships. But for me, it's home now is here. And uh, although I don't have a great record here, yeah, yeah, uh, so, I yeah. think I've been to the final once and maybe, uh, maybe twice, actually. But I you know, don't have a great record. It's still now, I think, the spiritual home of this tournament. The World Championships at the Crucible, the Masters was always at Wembley, and now has got its home at the Ali Pali. This tournament, Feels right, doesn't it? In York, Christmas time, at the barbecue. Yeah, I, th I think it's important that the, 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 the big tournaments have an identity of where, where they belong. I think that's very important. Now the Masters, as you say, was always at Wembley. Now it's uh, in the Ali Pali, the Crucible, and we've got the Barbican, definitely. Mm, I would agree. It's very warm and costly. I think it's a really nice venue to play snooker in. And we've had some unbelievable matches over the years. Some of the best snooker ever been played have been played in here. Mm. No doubt about it. Yeah, absolutely. The Barbican's <laughs> been fantastic for the UK, and uh, long may it continue.